Alright, hello and welcome everybody back to some Minecraft Musings Oasis Season 3. Soon to be Season 4, I imagine, because we're getting to quite a few videos in this one. So, And I really want to take a sec before we get started to just appreciate technology and all its wonder today. So, and to explain a little bit about that, my, my realm didn't load. You know, and some of you might remember from a little while back that I didn't even have access to my realm. But anyways, no, this was, it said, failed to connect to realm. Please try again later. And and remember, this is a PlayStation 5 on a wireless connection. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. Like, I, I would have never dreamed this when I first started playing video games back in like, oh, I don't know. I want to say 94, 95 in grade school, like playing the regular Nintendo. Anyways, my point is I waited like two seconds, backed out of the menu, went back into multiplayer, tried to reload my realm, and it worked just fine. Like, that's just the amazing progress of technology versus, like, so yeah, I started with the regular NES. Um, Super Mario Brothers 3 was my jam. And then I'd play Super Mario Brothers 1 whenever I'd go to my grandma's house because she didn't have Super Mario Brothers 3. But she did have a regular Nintendo too. And mind you, we're not exactly a wealthy family, but we are Colorado pioneers as, as in, in that, uh, because my grandparents and great grandparents were so stubborn and just, well, loved it here. It's a beautiful country and, you know, the elevation, all that. But, like, it's also some harsh winters. And, anyways, long story short, we could get the Pioneer license plates because our family lineage has been in this valley, um, the San Juan Valley. Actually, I don't even know. It's like kind of Arkansas Valley. Oh, uh, I'm going to get a bunch of angry, like, not really, like, shaking fists for this. But the San Luis Valley, I'm pretty sure. Buena Vista and Salida. There you go. Uh, although a lot of my family was from Salida, which is our cross-county rivals. I grew up in BV, hated Salida. I mean, found out there was a lot of cool people from there, just like us. And that was probably my first foray into sociology and studying cultures and other people. Like, these people that we hated, those purple losers down in, you know, Salida. Like, and they got the county seat, so their, uh, their town was bigger, more funded, had nicer things, had a pool. Um, we didn't have a pool. We had to go to Mount Prince and Hot Springs, which I actually helped with the most recent flagstone, which I don't think they were too happy with. They, they didn't like the people that laid it. I just moved the stone for some friends. But anyways, <coughs> yeah, it's all right. Sociology, understanding people and understanding that people will people and we're all not that different. Oh, and as I take that drink, you might notice how a couple of my tools, well, one of my tools, is not enchanted. And you might also notice, as I'm switching through here, that these tools are not nearly as powerful as the tools that I usually play with. Yeah, I went AFK, I watched a couple episodes of Better Call Saul, and I came back to a death screen. I had, not, I had forgotten to crouch, which if you crouch permanently, you cannot walk off an edge, and thus drown. Now, if you don't, it only takes a matter of seconds, especially with my controller drift. Okay, that was a little bit of me guiding it, but... And already... And this is the same if you're if you're thinking about becoming a parent, or if you are a parent of, an, of a small child, watch out of all water sources, because drowning is a huge thing with kids. Like, they don't know how to swim. I mean, they... But they're curious. They don't understand water. They don't, you know, unless you tell them. And even if you tell them, they're probably going to forget. So, anyways... And that's also in Breaking Bad, too. They have um, an episode where... Walt's talking about putting up sensors around his pool because he's about to have a little baby, an unexpected baby, when he's diagnosed with cancer and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's a pretty much a summary of the whole show. But, oh, yeah, and he also c cooks crystal meth. But, um, and we're going to do a, a bit of a dare episode today. And mind you, I just watched... And we'll get back to the sociology in just a sec. But I just watched a Neil deGrasse Tyson um, Star Talk episode on hallucinogens. Now, um, and it had a professional there, and I forget his name. I'd have to look it up. I'll try to include the link, actually, in this episode. I'll try to write myself a note, but, um, because uh, i got to wait until it's uploaded and then add the thing. But anyways, Google Calendar, great for planning stuff and keeping organized, even though I'll let you know when I do get organized. But, I mean, being able to handle hundreds of IT tickets during the day at work to, okay, maybe not that much now, but used to be hundreds, if not thousands. And so, anyways... I digress. Dare. So anyone who's in fifth grade in United States public schools, at least that's when I learned about it, gets introduced to substance abuse and it, well, it's 
DARE stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. Now, it basically is just a bunch of cops come into the classroom and try to put the fear in you with all sorts of drugs or substances, which, yes, I mean, that is fine to a point, but we're finding out a lot more now. Like, yes, drugs are bad when misused, dangerous when used. Um, there are health risks, but the health risks are nowhere near as bad as, say, alcohol, which is totally acceptable, and we did try to ban it back in the day. Um, some Muslim countries still ban it, um, or places where um, Islam is prevalent, they might ban it. Um, although, I've heard that Saudi Arabia is on the verge of legalizing alcohol, and I was just in Dubai. There was booze everywhere, and I, I even talked with one guy, because, well, one of my you know closest friends and basically family, he's my brother now, um, is a guy from Saudi Arabia, and... You know, and we were there, and we were talking to some guy, and like, uh, um, yeah, and he he was coaching me on what to say. I was like, "This is haram," you know. I pointed to his drink, and I was laughing. And he looks back at me, and he's like, "Nothing is haram with the new prince. Nothing is haram. Like, you know, it's all fine." And and I'm so happy to finally see that level of freedom. I mean, not that I've ever been to the Middle East before. This was the first time, but like, um, I was partying down in Dubai, like. And I was talking to a guy from Germany for, for quite a while on an, on an international flight, and he was telling me how he had been to Dubai like eight years ago, and alcohol was pretty much outlawed. Like, it was tolerated, like allowed, but it was very shunned, like very, you know, like, it was almost like being gay back in America, you know, not as far back as like 10 years ago, you know. Anyways, you know, something that, okay, it's legal, but don't let anybody know. And there was like a little hole-in-the-wall bar that they would go to. And so the reason I mention all of this is because cannabis versus alcohol, it's always come down to like basically a competition of the two. Now, cannabis has been illegal in America for a while. Um, and we've legalized it in Colorado and mo over half of the U.S., I think. I think we're now over half with recreational. Um, there's only two states that ban it outright. Like you can't do it medicinally and you can't do it recreationally. And so and all that means is you don't have to get a doctor's note to smoke bud. Like basically, in any state in the America, in America, so and places like Portugal have, I think it's Portugal, right? Yeah, you follow um pouco de português, my broken Portuguese that I learned from a CD. Um, anyways, <laughs> they legalize all drugs, um, just in an effort to just stop wasting so many resources and prosecuting and you know dealing with people doing it because people are curious by nature and when you grow up watching things like Miss Frizzle and the magic school bus you gain some curiosity you get messy you make mistakes and up until recently making those kinds of mistakes i.e. using drugs were only lethal and dangerous because of what would happen to you if you got caught um, or like especially with the opiate overdoses it's more um, they're, and teeth rotting out too. A lot of that is just because you're not able to take care of yourself because you spend so much time trying not to get busted by the fuzz and turned into a profit for the for the for law enforcement. Now, and granted, don't get me wrong, I do support law enforcement. I have a lot of friends and family in law enforcement. Uh, in fact, I got a buddy on the gang unit down in Denver, and I got buddies that are in gangs down in Denver. Like, you know, it, it's kind of a messed up. Um, what do you call it? Conflict of interest. That's why I don't pick sides. I pick trying to fix all the things. Um, fix the problems, really. Prohibition of any kind has caused more damage than it's done good. Now, don't get me wrong. Like um, Rehab and community corrections and a lot of the facilities that people are going to now, um, not TC Arrowhead, that place is a joke, um, or at least it was for one of my buddies who told me stories at length about how crappy it was, but... Oh, sorry, cruddy. I really don't want to have swearing in these videos. But granted, if you're in grades four or lower, you should ask your parents. Well, really, you should ask your parents when watching any of these videos because we do talk about some adult stuff. Now, granted, my own kids have heard my opinions on these things too because I talk about it with family, and you know, and I've got a lot of family in corrections too that they don't really like hearing the uh, <laughs> how things are going now. But I mean, it's just because of exposure. They were exposed to a lifetime of enforcing rules that they didn't necessarily agree with, but they weren't about to try to go out and, you know, um, cause a revolution or anything about it. Like, you know, you keep your head down, you get your paycheck, and you retire. Like, meanwhile, you're out there living the American dream. So, or at least you're trying to. Unless you get caught with drugs, then you can face, like, years, if not decades in prison. Um, yeah, so, actually, let's get a lot of paper. You know what? What else do we get? Oh, we got these things. What are these things? Oh, painting. Oh, and I 
think that takes there's the painting oh never mind that only takes a oh, sorry I'm just a lot of broken trains of thought there oh anyways sorry from as someone who has experienced or observed what's what as far as corrections law enforcement and the other side of the law you know I've seen a lot of things and I can tell you a lot of it doesn't make sense oh ho, ho. that's pretty cool what about here well so that was with that one because we had some extra room oh, can I All right. there we go that's interesting we might just leave that all right anyways and, and a lot of places like I said are figuring this out and they're reacting to it but we need to retroactively make this work for everybody else like the people that have already been shafted by the prison system or the correction system the, the legal system like uh, to give you an idea there a drug dealer surcharge in Larimer County is about three grand you get charged three grand three thousand dollars of money you probably don't have just for getting caught for dealing drugs okay so um, and then you get like years in prison or anyways I digest. Uh -huh. We should, well, I'm trying to think. More about, like, the legality of certain substances. Like, listening uh -huh. to that Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ah, oh, come on. Uh -huh. I need to get another controller. Ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> ah! This is so sad. Ah! Ah, oh, jeez. There we go. Let's power through it. You gotta remember, I grew up with like Nintendo 64, and you know when the controllers would start dying, you'd have to like hold the cords a certain way. Same with phone chargers. Like I just saw a YouTube video about that. You know, that's why when I see things like how fast, huh? um, how fast I was able to connect to this realm with a te with a network difficulty. Somewhere along the line, there was a failure. Like something huh? happened. Oh, and sorry. Also, to finish that thought about dying and losing all of my tools. So I was AFK, I was watching Better Call Saul for a couple hours, and you get about five minutes to go collect your stuff from where you died. So I came back, saw the death screen, went swimming all around. It was over there somewhere. I think it was like right in that, that cove right there. And I went swimming around looking for a bunch of floating stuff, specifically the, the sparkly blue uh, tools, which look a lot like the, the crystal meth that Walt makes in the Breaking Bad. So anyways, so now we have Wizards of the Coast here. I right, put a bunch of beds here. I went and got a lot more stuff. That's where we got a bunch more juniors with their their gold chains. Look at that. They got like gold necklaces, I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, got a lot of beds. Gave a lot of food for them. Destroyed a lot of the, you might have noticed, the composters over here. Even though I already started trading with a lot of these villagers, that locks in whatever they're trading. So, I didn't have to worry about destroying their job blocks. Now, with these, if you don't trade with them, then you're able to get things like how this one has Unbreaking 3, and this one has... Okay, so this one... Wait, let's do this. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So... Wait. Okay. I don't know which one he's at. Actually, I should go ahead and... Protection 4. I was going to say, I should lock in the trades as I'm messing around with this. Because some of these books, like, it takes a while to find. Like, what's this? Sharpness 4. That's awesome. Now, I think it goes to Sharpness 5. But, I mean, this is a lot more efficient, a lot faster than... Although, where are you? Okay, now... Don't judge me. There we go. If you can't tell where it is, you can just kill him and start over. This is a game. This isn't real life. I wouldn't do that. But but actually, companies do. They fire you, and then they'll... Oh, also, we need to get some food. Let's go. Or, or maybe not. They're already going to make a new villager. What do you guys have? Infinity 1? Eh. Curse of Bite. Okay, both of you are garbage. But I'll let you live. I'll come back, and I will try to do the job block thing. Let's see if I can get... Okay, wait, wait. Is this the one? No, this is protection. Which is good. This one. No, that's sharpness. What's this guy over here? Have? Multi shot. Actually I do kinda wanna keep that. Let's let's do a multi shot. Okay.
That's because that's pretty cool. Um, wait, was it this one? No. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. We killed him. Sorry, we just killed him. That's right. Now these are all good trades. Um, okay. <laughs> so what you would have to do basically is, as their job block is broken, then they lose their job, and then they they're supposed to turn back into the red shirt, kind of like that kid, only an adult size. And then they'll turn back into the white shirt, or they'll be wearing a white shirt, as soon as they re-link up with it. See, so, you know, whoever tried to link up with this can't reach it. So, I want to say some of these have taken the new job, but they're still the farmers, so the trades. I don't know. I don't fully understand that mechanic inside and out. But anyways, and back to sociology. <laughs> now that we've explained why our tools are such low grade, yet it only cost me like an hour or two of grinding. Also, this is a jobless guy, so we'll go ahead and mix him. Okay. Alright, right in front of everybody. Broad daylight. So, um, yeah, so that's why my tools are kind of ghetto. Uh, but yeah, a couple hours of grinding, finding the right books. Mending is the big one. You need to get mending, because then experience will heal your tools, so they'll repair them. So then you don't know, I didn't spend any extra diamonds except for what I had here, and we still have a stack of diamonds over there, just from when I was digging out. Oh, I just realized I don't have my map. That's one of the more painful things to lose. However, since we put a map here, I started making duplicates or copies of my maps. And I actually posted one here. And I have a cartography table with some supplies nearby. Hopefully I'll have a compass, but if not, I got the stuff to make it. Okay. So, compass, we have paper, let's get rid of some of this paper. I mean, what, what books do we have here? Oh yeah, I was starting to do, so that's Unbreaking 2 and 2 and 2. But we have an Unbreaking 3. I guess I didn't put it, let's go ahead and put that. Wait, let's keep the books and the wool. Do you have any... Okay, anyways. So now... Actually, you know what? I kind of want to go up here. That looks fun. Like, that's where we were... <laughs> we keep talking about... Or I keep talking about building a base here. Because this island is, like, high up, like... Very high el elevation. Surrounded by a natural moat. Anyways. Looks like a dinosaur, too. Or a reptile. I do have a little settlement here where I started doing, uh, going out of peaceful. And I suppose we should... Wait, what am I doing? Cartography table. I suppose I should... Wait. Oh, you know what? I need a locator map. So... Empty locator map? So I guess first I gotta do paper and compass... Locator map. Put that there. This. Whoops. <laughs> there. Now I get two copies. I put the other one back. And now I got a map. See? Simple as that. I mean, granted, the, the controller drift is probably the most painful part out of all of that. Like, I no longer have to worry about if I die when I'm AFK. Or if I take it out of peaceful, but I'm not really geared up for that. So let's maybe prepare for that. Um, just gonna keep this here. All right. So and for that we're gonna need a sword, some enchantments, the sharpness. We're gonna need emeralds. We're gonna need experience, like all that books. Oh, and also, oh, wait, do I have a, I lost my minecart, but I already built a new one. Check this out. You can go underwater, then above water, and then get your breath up. Now this, I need to either shorten it, I tried to make a little air pocket, but that doesn't work, because at some point of the air pocket, see, right here, oh, and this is actually where it, it stops. But then you can breathe. 
Ooh. I could maybe... I don't know. Anyways. That's where I'm at right now with that. I tried to make this little structure of glass to where you could replenish your oxygen. Because if you don't... Then by here you start taking damage. And that's as far as I got for now. But I don't want to disturb too much of the natural ecosystem and I want to start using slabs to kind of make it even a thinner rail because as it is right now that's pretty that's quite a bit to be going in there uh, then again it is like a scenic tour of all the, the coral and stuff so oh these are puffer fish <laughs> and then come on there you go if you get hit then you get poisoned it's so hard to do that so I mean just it goes to show you it goes to show you that you're pretty safe in Minecraft from Pufferfish. Especially if you're playing peaceful. It doesn't matter. And it's gone. <laughs> Although it is kind of fun to hide those. And then if you have other people playing in your world or your realm, then they walk over it and then they end up getting poisoned and then they freak out. But you put like just trap doors over water with them in it. And then they'll walk over the trap doors. I think I saw that. Now there's a few YouTubers that I watch as far as like redstone traps and whatnot, but oh man, I still gotta take those watermelon down. You know what? Let's do that real quick. Whew. Gotta be careful. But now that we know that melons don't Okay, this could be risky. But if I fall I just gotta make sure I fall away. Then I'll land in water. In fact, we'll do it like right here. Okay, how close are we? Almost. there. Alright. Don't fall. Okay. Bada bing. And bada bing. Alright. Now, we'll stay squatting. We'll just chop on down and fall straight down. Yeah, and this axe isn't nearly as fast as the other one because we had efficiency 5, I think, on it. I don't know. But that's just another fiddling around with, like, the work. Uh, the lectern. There you go. Just placing new lecterns and getting them to s trade the correct spellbook. So. And they can swim. As long as there isn't any magma blocks, as I say that. You can see them dying from that. Oh, and here, let's look at this thing too. I left it as kind of like a tribute to show. First, it's like, wow, you can actually power this. And you can see the lights turn on when it's on that. And I thought this was the only way to do it because I was using redstone torches. Now, you can't place redstone torches underwater. So, in one of my other worlds, I had a roller coaster that would dip underwater, but you could only go like, and then back up because then you'd lose your power, your, you know, your energy, and you couldn't get back out. I mean, you could probably do a couple in the middle of there. Actually, no, even as I say that, because then you wouldn't get to the next power one, and then you wouldn't have enough power to go back uphill. So, I don't know. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe, well, yeah, you could do two more. Anyways. But now that I know you can use redstone blocks, yeah. We're going to make that pretty cool roller coaster. Alright, but yeah, substances. So that Neil video, Star Talk, where they have a professional there talking about MDMA or ecstasy. Now, that's just one that they made legal in like the 80s, I think they said. on that, And they talk about that in the video. Turns out, it can actually help people with trauma in a clinical setting. Now, in a non-clinical setting, it risks actually causing more trauma because it opens up these areas of the brain. And just the way that they, this guy s describes it, I mean, 
it's it's no longer just a bunch of hippies like out there saying you know man this is a happy driver it's gonna make you happy or peaceful no it's actual like professional scientists and doctors saying like yes we are having success with patients dealing with ptsd depression and even addiction when using psychedelics like i don't know why they talked about ecstasy as a psychedelic i guess that is but they were mostly talking about mushrooms and lsd or no, mushrooms and ecstasy, but anyways, you're talking about the majority of drugs out there, and then as far as, like, the only ones left are, like, crack and, or, well, cocaine and meth and heroin and opiates, so, like, really bad ones that aren't nearly as popular as the uh, the first, you know, three, and probably not nearly as useful, too. In fact, Hitler did meth. I mean, that's actually, I think, where it, uh, well, one of the chemical compounds came from was, and that's actually Heisenberg's, um, Walt's, um, ghost name, or his his alias, um, which is like a Nazi scientist or something, so, but anyways, yeah, Hitler was cracked out on methamphetamine a lot, um, in fact, he was starting to, like, lose his mind and stuff, and, and actually, you know, come to think of it, I wonder if that isn't why, like, a lot of the, ugh, and then you hear about, you know, one of our for former presidents on a lot of Adderall. Well, that's synthetic amphetamines. Like, it's doctor-prescribed focus medication for ADHD and ADD, which, yeah, it'll make you super hyper-focused, and it'll make you able to do all so sorts of work. And But then you're start you're going to start feeling your heart, like, hurting and, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, is it worth it? You know, yes, you have great attention now, but, you know, are you a methed-out zombie? Like, you know, and that's... Uh, that's debatable like I, I think it's very useful in certain situations definitely not like psychotropics where and those are usually used to balance people out is like a common term and stuff that psychiatrists use but you know then come to find out they can actually induce psychosis specifically talking about lithium um, which is used to balance someone out and basically zonk them out so they can kind of get back to a clean palate mentally or what have you but then if you like stop taking them suddenly it'll actually make you go crazy like if it, it, being off your meds is a real thing and we joke about this but then it, when it comes down to like oh i mean well, look at a lot of the shootings happened by people that were not mentally well like you know that's a big cause for investigating this and being like wait a minute you know what what are we actually feeding these people and is it good like if they mismanage their meds take too much too little or none at all like will they freak out and start thinking that the devil's talking to them or something you know something you know very scary and dangerous so anyways now addressing gun violence is definitely a thing too and i was having a good political oh yeah i already talked about that on the last episode i believe but um didn't realize that um governor polis here in colorado signed something in 21 i think i haven't looked it up enough to see if it's for real or not and notice when i let go of the controller mm. gotta squat because i'm sidestepping to the side i could fall off not a big deal, but it's also not really time to harvest these. Yeah, a lot of doings in Oasis. <coughs> Anyways, my point of all that is, is once you start learning, like, about the substances, the history, the uses, the abuses, I mean, because it's all still easily abused, um, and same with financial burden, but then when you look at alcohol, you know, and especially talking to the people, there you go, there's the adult version of it, but anyways, um, talking to people like Saudi Arabian leadership that are, you know, if they're thinking about legalizing alcohol, maybe suggest they legalize cannabis first and see how that goes, I mean, it couldn't hurt, like, and to see how well things are going in California and Oregon and Colorado, three of the states that were first pioneers of legalizing cannabis, the studies have come out that teen use did not go up as much as expected, I don't even know if at all, but... Um, it's actually a pretty hefty fine in prison time to be caught selling to a minor in Colorado, or selling in general, too. It's now tax evasion, so cannabis dealing is weed dealing, pot dealing. It's no longer a thing. I mean, it is, but, like, it's no longer, well, A, funded and supported by the cartels. Like, you know, a lot of that power is dried up and gone, which, for better or for worse, you know, at the end of the day, even the cartels, like, granted, yeah, a lot of violent and evil stuff coming from that, but why? You know, the economic dis economic disparity of L Central and South America, when we're, we got it so good up here, and their neighbors to the north are just living it up and doing very socially irresponsible things, and yet they're, you know, down there struggling, so, and it's a beautiful land, at least Costa Rica where I went, like, 
I've had people call that like, oh, what was it? Somebody tried to call me out saying, oh, that's like the Disneyland of Latin countries. Like, you know, that's where a bunch of rich white people went. And I took offense to that because I was like, I'm, I'm not wealthy. What, what are you talking about? But I have, been, I have been to Costa Rica. I worked my butt off to pay for it. <laughs> Anyways, that's all for this one. Ta-ta for now, and I will see you in the next one.